Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson here on the channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to find a $1,000 per month product slash market uh, using Helium 10. And speaking of Helium 10, right before we get started, I've been meaning to bring this up for some time now. There's only 26 days left before this event starts. The Sell and Scale Summit by Helium 10. Gary Vaynerchuk's going to be there. Neil Patel's going to be there. If you want to surround yourself with a bunch of awesome entrepreneurs and get access to you know the latest information in the selling e-commerce strategies, um, this is going to be the place to be. Now, unfortunately, I can't be there, but Helium 10 did reach out to me and they gave me a discount code for you guys. So uh, just for being part of my audience, you can get $100 off your ticket if you use this code here. So S3 PAX Savage at checkout, you get $100 off. So there'll be a link to take you to this page. Follow that link in the description below and then put it in this code at checkout. This code will also be next to the link down in the description. So if you want to go to an awesome summit, surround yourself with, you know, top entrepreneurs, this is your chance to do that. So just wanted to bring that up. So when you're picking your product to sell on Amazon or your own website, uh, there's two options that you have really now both end up with the same result the the key point is that you need to figure out who you're selling to before you can build your brand to sell that product because we know we don't want to just be in a commodity race to the bottom pricing strategy type situation where we just sell the same thing that everyone else is selling for a little bit less or potentially even a little bit more but eventually our price has to come down from the competition no we want a brand that actually has some authority in the space and people seek out our product specifically even if we charge more how do we do that well there's two options so you can start right here in helium 10 and you can come to black box and you could fill out the keyword um, list or keyword box what would you call this i'll show you what it is so i don't sound stupid so you come over here search for keywords fill these filters out and find a market this way. Now I have many videos about this, so that's not what we're doing today. I just wanna make a video that I've made before. We are going to be doing option number two, which is go and find your market first, then come back to your Helium 10 dashboard and put in some work to figure out what those customers would buy. And the way that you do that is you come over to a new tab and you would just search, search like top hobbies and then depending on whether you want it to be for men, for women in the US, in the world, you can make up some decisions like Google Decide, or we go with the newest ones, Top Hobbies 2022. So reading, traveling, fishing, crafting, television, bird watching, collecting, etc. This list goes on to be 15. There's some lists that have like 100. So you could totally figure something out. Here we have parkour, horse riding, ice skating. Those are enthusiast markets. Those are people who will not just buy one product from you, but they'll buy three products from you, four products from you, five products with you which brings up my next point. Say we took fishing, we head over to Helium 10 dashboard. The next step, we're gonna be going to Magnet. When you go to Magnet, there's gonna be something that happens, right? You're gonna figure out some key information about this customer. And really quickly, if you guys could do me a favor and leave a like down below, it helps get this video out to more people. As a small YouTuber, I appreciate that so much. And as a thank you for doing that, here is a fist bump. You're gonna figure out if there's enough products to sell, right? Because we don't just wanna go sell a product, we wanna build a brand. To do that, we need multiple products. So make sure you can come up with at least three to five products to sell or else don't sell that product. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the very hobby and put it into Helium 10. It doesn't have to be specific at this point. So we could put horse riding, bird watching, any one of those in here and then see what comes up. Fishing alone has 100,000 search volume. It's a very big marketplace. If we sort this by search volume, what that's gonna do is it's gonna show us the highest searched, most relevant keywords to what we put in. So you'll see there are things that are loosely related like waterproof backpack and hats for women. Okay, you could wear a hat and be a woman who's fishing, or you could have something very specific like fishing line, fishing lures, fishing rod. Okay, those things are all directly related. Uh, the key thing that we wanna see here is that the main thing that you're looking for has at least three to five products, which you've already seen between line lures and rod, uh, waterproof bag, tackle box, etc. Okay, there's five right there. And then the search volume should be between ten to $50,000 per month for one of the main products that you choose. So these might be a little bit too high of a search volume to enter for your first product. Let's come down here and try and go into more of the $30,000 or 30,000 search per month terms to see if there's anything in here. Um, that maybe we want to start targeting initially. 
So our first product that would get us into this market might be something like fishing rod holder, okay? So that is niched down quite a bit within this area, but still has 25,000 people per month looking for that very thing. So what we would then do is we would go and research that customer's needs, not just research the product. So the thing that most people do when they get to this point is they go and open this up on Amazon and then they look at what's doing well and they make some version of that, okay? So first thing we have to realize is maybe there's two versions of this. There's one for your garage, and then there's one like this that's actually for your boat, okay? So one that holds it when you're out fishing, and then one that stores them once you're home. The first thing we'd wanna do is figure out which one of those we need to go into, and then go, like I said, research the customer, not the product just yet. So it's a good idea, get a little bit of an idea, of, it's a good idea to get a little bit of an idea of what's selling really well. So let me know, do we want to go into the market of rod holders for boats or do we want to go into the market of kind of garage storage, home storage for rods? So let's check that out. We're going to open up X-Ray by Helium 10 here. And this is going to give us the revenue of these exact things. This one has 115,000 per month in revenue. Amazing. And that's the one for home. And then this one is actually the one for um, boats. So this one is doing $70,000 per month. Okay, so now maybe one thing we wanna look at is which which market is underserved. So most of these look like they're the ones for home storage and there's not as many for the boats. So that could lead us down the direction of, okay, we're gonna make uh, the ultimate broad boat holder where it works on every boat, no matter what it is. We figured out a clamp that'll work and attach to almost anything. So then we go over to where you are right now, head to YouTube and type in best fishing rod holder. Come over here and look at some of these videos. Now these are people who potentially manufacture these themselves or are reviewing them as a customer. So now we can see some of the interest level Yes, which we already saw there's interest level for Magnet, but one of the most important things is going to be what people are saying. So rod holders, different styles. It says 145,000 views. That's the reason I clicked on it is because I wanna see the comments here. Looking for extenders that will fit my Kazi's rod holders. Okay, all of these comments are exactly what you should be looking into, right? They're what people are saying about this product. They're the questions that people have. You come in here, listen to what the video says, and he's gonna explain as an expert of these products what the main things you should be looking out for as, you know, he's gonna be explaining it for a customer, but you can go in there kind of uh, secret ninja style and get information to design your own. Now, this is a very specific example of one product, but what I want you to focus, is on, focus on are the main systems and protocols that we're using. So I wanna revisit some of those things that we went over. Use a hobbies list or off the top of your mind to find your customer. Come to Magnet and search that broad term to figure out if there are at least three to five related products. And those products should be somewhere in 10 to 50,000 per month in search volume. Once you figure that out, you have to come over to Amazon and make sure that there's proof of concept that other companies are already selling this product successfully. That's going to kind of serve as your belief system of, okay, if I do this right, I can make money because I can see using X-Ray by Helium 10 that I can make money doing this. And people are making six figures per month. By the way, if you don't have Helium 10 already, there'll be a link in the description to get 10% off your subscription for life. It's my affiliate link. So great way to support the channel and get yourself a tool that is uh, priceless in what I do. I don't know what I would do without this tool. From that point, you're going to research the customer, not the product, okay? It's, you know, I say customer, not product. You still wanna research the product and figure out the key points of the product, but there's so much emphasis on product differentiation and product development that no one thinks about the customer and what they actually want. And this is the ultimate way to design the product, right? This is what Apple does. This is what huge companies do. This is what Tesla does. How do I make the end experience the most enjoyable possible experience? It's what Google does, right? How do I do that? That can only be learned by studying the customer. Go to places that they hang out, YouTube, Pinterest, 
um, forums, go figure out what they're saying, questions that they're asking, become a, a voice in that community and uh, go into Facebook groups and ask questions. You know, a lot of my students for one-on-ones are now going into uh, Facebook groups and they're asking questions directly related to how they're going to start their brands and develop their products. And they're getting 80, 90 responses from people that are excited for them to start a brand in that space because they're enthusiasts in that market and give tons of helpful insight. So that's one, just one of the strategies that I cover at this point, you should be able to take this information and go do this in whatever market it is that you're interested in starting a brand in. Now we're just scratching kind of the surface here of the depth that we can go into, but this is a really good starting point to get you going in the right direction and picking your first market. Keep in mind one last quote. This is from Alex Ramosi. If you had to charge 10 times the price of your competitors, what would you provide? That's a really interesting thought experiment, right? Because, okay, say this is $25, $39. If I had to charge $400 for a rod holder, what would I do? How would I design that rod holder? What would I include? Well, I don't think any way of designing a rod holder makes it worth $400. And that's why this is so important to think this way is because it puts you beyond just the product. It goes, oh, maybe there would be a consultation call with a professional fisherman in our group of ambassadors. Maybe there would be a digital program that came along with it to show you how to troll using um, fishing rod holders. And there would be um, a subscription for that's free for the first three months that comes with boxes of lures. Like you have to think in such a creative way to go, how in the world could I make it seem like this was worth $400? That's why that question's important. It's from a book called $100 Million Offers. Really good book. Read it if you haven't already. But that's where we're going to leave off today's video. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end. I appreciate every last one of you. Please subscribe down below. I always enjoy having new members of the community, new people to talk to. I've been doing this for years now, um, just sharing my story. Someone just commented on a video of mine that was from four years ago, and it was talking about my first Amazon shipment. I was sitting like... Uh, it was just like at my dining room table in my parents' house like this, like talking to the camera. And I thought that was so funny. It kind of brought me back a little bit. So yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to be here years later still doing this and sharing my story and uh, updating you guys how the entrepreneurship life is going and always providing my insight. So if you appreciate that kind of just real content, I'm not trying to really sell you anything, uh, just sharing, sharing the journey, uh, be sure to subscribe down below. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Later.